Hey there. Uh, in this video, we are going to discuss how to use a stood tuple, which is a way to create user defined type. And I said it's move over structs and classes because tuple provide us much more benefit than using struct and classes. In most of the scenario, you can still use them, but you would like in, in some situation you would like to use stood tuples. So here is the way. Here is a structure uh, called uh, which has integer, char, and float, and this is the way we define our class in structs. Now, if you want to define a tuple, the first thing you need to do is to do a has include tuple. It's available uh, in C++ 11 onwards. And if you want to define a tuple, you can do like this. So here is my tuple, uh, which is type type to tuple uh, user defined type, which contains one integer, one character and float. So uh, now we have to initialize uh, this tuple. You all know how to initialize struct and classes. We'll just see tuple over here. So let's say I'm creating tuple one. It can be initialized in a normal way, normal C++ initializing way like this 1.5. This is one way. The another way is that it's the initializer list. You can say B 2.5. Okay, and third way is uh, there is a, a function given by standard library called make tuple, and it does the same thing. It takes the same parameter. So the, these are the three ways on which we can uh, initialize a tuple. Now, after initialization, you will be wondering how we can access that. So to access, we'll have to use again a standard library function called get. So to get the first element, we'll do this get zero of this particular tuple. And we can do the same thing for other members. Okay, now we'll run the program. And see, see we are able to access this uh, tuple members of tp3 which is 3c and 3.5 now this is all about accessing now what if we need to change it okay so to change it what you can do is the same way we access it like get zero of tp3 i just want to let's say this integer i want to add or multiply it by 100 and i the character i just want uh, it to change from c to d and this floating point number what i want to do is that changes to 35.6r number okay this is changed and after changing if i will print it let's see i'm running the program and see it's printing the changed value after that now you have 300d 35.6 so this is all about how you can create tuples and access them and change value to that now you will ask a question that why tuples and what what's the benefit it gives as compared to structures one thing the first benefit is that you can get to know the number of elements in the tuple here number of elements are three you can get to know the size of a structure, but you will not be able to know that number of elements contained in that size because both will contain the size will be, I mean, after alignment, it will be around 12 in 32 bit machines. So uh, you will not be able to know uh, how many bytes occupied by first character. So to do this, you can, you can do something like there is a tuple library function called uh, tuple uh, size. It takes here our uh, user defined tuple and, and just just to make it sli slightly clear, clear number of elements in tuple equal to okay now I'll run this program and see what it prints number of elements in tuple equal to three okay so this is not possible in structures the second thing 
uh, which you will like very interesting is that even if by some way you come to know that what are the elements in structures you will know not know the type of it but with tuples you know the individual type of each elements using type id operator let's say i am using type id of get g uh, first element of this tuple uh, and i'll just comp copy this for both the first uh, second and third element let's see what it prints now you can see that it prints i c n f which is a sort of integer char and float i guess this output is compiler dependent and in in visual studio if you do it you will get int char and float so these are the some of the major benefits of tuple for which you should consider it instead of doing classes and structures that's all for this video and we'll have something very interesting uh, for writing functional way of coding in the next video using tuples till then thank you thanks for watching